On Sunday, the 21st of July, John Williams, owner of Titan Aircraft, a builder of experimental three-quarter scale P-51 Mustangs known as the T-51 Mustang, lost his life when his T-51 Mustang suffered a catastrophic prop hub failure, preceded by a high RPM surge of the Chevrolet LS3 engine. Here's what we know so far from the NTSB preliminary report. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and I'm a member of the Experimental Aircraft Association, Chapter 1175, here locally in Northern California, and I've worked on several experimental aircraft projects over the years. Experimental aircraft gives you the ultimate freedom and ability to build and design aircraft that do not necessarily conform to FAA certified aircraft standards. But with this freedom comes a lot of responsibility and a higher level of risk than the rest of aviation is exposed to. And one of the longtime holy grails of experimental aviation is to come up with a reasonable automotive conversion to be used for aviation use. And in all of the nearly 50 years of aviation, I have yet to see a decent automotive conversion made available for general aviation purposes. And the problems generally are not with the engine themselves, it's the fact that you need to reduce the RPM of the automotive engine to about two to 3,000 RPM for the propeller so the tips of the propeller do not exceed the speed of sound. So you gotta build a custom gearbox and all the associated accessories to make these systems work. And here's John Williams himself, the owner of Titan Aircraft and the pilot involved in the fatal crash explaining the challenges of making these automotive conversions work. This clip comes from AV8AK YouTube channel. Uh, and we kind of, you know, probably over the years, we've probably done more automotive engine conversions in, in airplanes than probably any other manufacturer. And with, with a great deal of success. You know, the, the engines themselves are, are, are not the problem. It's all the accessories around it that, that, that become the, the uh, the problem, and and when you think about it, it's it's that you know the aircraft engines, you know we've been putting the you know pancake the Lycoming Continentals and in in these airplanes Franklins for uh, 60, 70 years, and and so they've worked out all the bugs. When you take an automotive engine now. It's not the engine itself. The engine the engines themselves are, are, are okay, but now you've got all the accessories around it. it I mean, just oil lines, uh, fuel lines. You know, some, some of the some of the problems were fuel lines. You know, oil lines, uh, 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 coolant. It's it's not it's not and it's not just the gearbox. It's it's uh, so you got you got have all of those those variables and things that you have to learn about those systems that. Uh, uh, that come back to they can come back to bite you, but I think that that uh, you know we've had had real good success with it, and then of course you have have people that want, always want to do their own thing. That people want to get more horsepower, so they so they uh, they they get a hot rod guy to to uh, to beef up their their engine. So so the first thing hot rod guy goes to is high compression. Well, high compression is the enemy of, of propellers and gearboxes. So we don't, you know, we don't want that. We want, you know, stock engines. The stock engines have plenty of power, and then they're, then they're also they're heavy. The engines are heavy by, uh, by nature because we don't have to be as weight conscious on a on a car as we do in an airplane. So, um, but, but you have things like the LS and the and the BMW engines that are, that are, are fantastic from a uh, power to weight ratio. So we have. Uh, the uh, the the LS engine is you know puts out a where we're using it is about 300 horsepower. Our gearbox is designed for 300 horsepower with a safety factor. On to the NTSB report, 21 July 2024, John Williams Titan T51 Mustang November 751 Tango X-ray FAR Part 91. About 17.54 Eastern Daylight Time, an experimental amateur-built Titan T-51 Mustang November 751 Tango X-ray was substantially damaged when it was involved in an accident near Jermac Airport 7 Delta Niner in Geneva, Ohio. The Jermac Airport is a 3,200-foot-long, rather narrow strip that John operates out of here near the shores of Lake Erie. The commercial pilot was fatally injured. The airplane was operated under FAR Part 91 general aviation. 
According to a private pilot who witnessed the accident flight, who planned to complete a demonstration flight with the accident pilot, prior to the flight, the accident pilot had performed maintenance on the airplane to include work on the pedostatic system and a fuel filter replacement. The private pilot reported that the accident pilot had completed a few run-ups and ground taxi runs, which appeared normal. Following the run-ups, the pilot checked the oil and noticed it was low and subsequently added some oil. The accident pilot then departed for a brief flight to ensure everything was functional with the airplane before taking on the passenger. Good move. The private pilot observed the accident pilot performing several maneuvers over the airport to include aileron rolls and a few laps above the airport. He estimated the maneuvers were all completed well above field elevation, at least 3,000 feet or higher. The private pilot then observed, this is the guy who apparently got a video of the entire accident, observed the airplane descend to approach runway 1 to conduct a lower pass. He observed the airplane fly over the majority of runway 1, then engine power increased, and the airplane pitched up into a pull-up maneuver, started the climb near where he was standing next to the runway. When the airplane pitched up, he heard the engine go to a super high RPM, and then the entire prop hub shatters. He observed several parts and pieces explode from the nose section of the airplane and the engine noise subsequently went silent. The private pilot observed the airplane turn left and complete a 180 degree turn and descend toward a road that was about a one quarter mile west of the runway, eventually turning out of his view while flying southbound. It was his observation that the pilot was navigating toward the road to the west of the airport to complete an emergency landing. Here's Geneva, Ohio, located on the shore of Lake Erie, and the little airport that he's operating out of, Jermac Airport, nearly 3,000 feet long, but only about 26 feet wide, the paved portion of this runway, with trees located on either side. So according to the eyewitness report, John did a low pass down runway one and had the prop failure and then attempted a 180 degree turn back to land here on Mini Ranch Trail Road. Again, a uh, rather narrow passage in between, surrounded by trees. According to a witness who was driving his vehicle northbound on the road about a quarter mile west of the airport, he heard the sound of an airplane engine that seemed to be over-spooling as he continued his northbound drive and observed the accident airplane approaching the road directly toward him, flying southbound. The driver pulled off the road to the west, and about the same time, he observed the airplane maneuver slightly to the east. Shortly thereafter, he observed an airplane's left wing clip an elevated tree branch that was near the road. Subsequently, the aircraft rolled over and impacted the train inverted. The witness observed that the airplane's right landing gear was down, and the left landing gear appeared to be in transient and coming down, and the airplane's wings were wobbling up and down. The private pilot located at the airport recorded a video of the pilot's runway flyover. The video recorded the airplane approaching runway one a few hundred feet above ground level. The engine sound increased during the pull-up and the airplane entered a shallow left bank and an explosion is seen and heard originating from the forward engine cowling area. Figure one shows the video frame by frame during the part's separation and the red circles outline the four propellers separated from the propeller hub. Frame one through four and there is the failure of the prop hub. And there's one, two, three, four individual prop blades separating from the hub. All major portions of the airframe were located in the debris path. There was no evidence of fire. Three propeller blades were located a few hundred feet north of runway one, and one blade fell onto runway one. Fragments of engine cowling were located on and north of runway one. Well, they don't say on the report here, but I believe this is the Mini Ranch Trail Road, just uh, a beam, the Jermac Airport looking southbound so the airport's off to our left so this is the direction of flight and here's the initial tree impact and the wreckage ended up here so very narrow slot he was trying to get into power lines on the right hand side and trees on both sides flight control continuity was confirmed for all control surfaces the right landing gear was found extended and locked and the left landing gear was found partially extended evidence of oil spray and oil coating was observed on the belly of the fuselage left wing and oil cooler area tailwheel assembly and elevator. The landing gear handle was down. The throttle lever was found pulled mostly aft towards idle. The propeller control was found full forward. A Dynon avionics EFIS was recovered mostly undamaged.
The airplane was equipped with an experimental General Motors Corvette LS3 V8 300 horsepower engine and a Titan Aircraft Autoflight 1.9 gearbox. The engine demonstrated internal continuity from its forward section to its aft section and when the gearbox attachment area was rotated by hand. The gearbox had separated from the engine and was located 10 feet forward of the main wreckage. Its drive gears rotated normally. The propeller hub remained attached to the gearbox and it had fractured. The engine was equipped with a four blade composite propeller manufactured by Whirlwind Standard. All four propeller blades remained mostly intact. They displayed varying degrees of gouging and impact related tears and cuts. Two propeller blades separated at the propeller hub and retained no portion of the propeller hub structure. The two other propeller blades retained fragments of the propeller hub structure at their respective bases. John had a commercial pilot's rating, single engine and C. He was also a CFI and a repairman, experimental aircraft builder. That's a little bit different than being an A&P license or an, a an I license. He was issued a second class medical certificate and had reported 12,500 flight hours at the time and 100 hours within the last six months. John has been building these aircraft since the 1980s. So it sounds like the prop hub failed after it exceeded design RPM limitations. So investigators and uh, folks that are building these engines up are going to have to determine what caused the surge in RPM to the engine, which subsequently caused the prop hub to fail. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.